How's it going, everyone? Tim here, Tuesday Adventures. Hope everyone's all well there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. Well, we're just going to continue on. So next up here, we have another build. So this here is kind of a fun one. Um, I have a friend in uh, Oklahoma that we crawl with on a regular basis, and he has been working on a chassis for uh, quite a little bit, um, gets stuff cut, getting some designs, getting plenty of testing and everything done, um, and has finally um, kind of made it uh, available to the public. So um, I was able to uh, snag one and get everything going. So this here is the Lemming chassis um, build, and honestly, I've had an absolute blast with this one. Everything on this build has been pretty fun um, and have been able to take it out. And honestly, it had it was pretty killer. I'm definitely excited for it and everything like that. So again, I'll link um, everything down below um, in the description, minus the chassis. Um, currently, that is just available um, through him, uh, through Facebook and Messenger and stuff like that. Um, there is a, I can't remember, I'll double check, see if he has a page set up uh, for the chassis or not um, at this point. But once something um, becomes more, I can link that down below and stuff like that. We'll just kind of work our way again down from top to bottom uh and again familiar body here this is the j concept stage killer body just really like this body uh for like these cheater builds and all the comps and everything that i have scheduled because very laid back on rules don't have to worry about points and stuff like that so nice narrow lightweight body is what we go for um if you notice there the body clip system everything's all good and push of a few buttons. So these are actually automotive uh, hood pins, um, push button hood pins. I've been using here um, recently on a few, few builds just because one, it makes it for nice and clean. I don't have a bunch of stuff hanging up and simply pushing some buttons and the body's off, and the body's on just like that. Now getting everything positioned might take a little bit of work. Um, I've just been modifying some body posts and everything that I have already, uh, like up here in the front is the, um, Krupp Carm Works, um, fish crawlers, parts, um, unicorn body mounts, um, and the stud that it comes with goes right through there. I was able to bolt it down, make it all secure. And, and here in the rear are some of the posts that come with the SCX-10 Pro. I had several left over and the bolt can fit right down the middle. And then I do the nut to sink everything down and it grubs screw on the side just to make sure nothing um, comes loose. Now, if they do have a downside, it is weight. Before modifying, when you get the stud, and the pins they're about 30 grams each but as you can see here i do cut quite a bit of the studs out um, and that can vary whether you have a tall body or low body um, so you are cutting a lot of it out but instead if they do have a downside it is the weight but i'm okay with it because one day i look good and so much easier to get the body on and off so underneath here here it is this is the limbing um very nice carbon fiber chassis um board based design it has a very uh low profile skid there not a whole lot uh, of skid plate and everything else like that um so it did come with both the chassis rails a um, couple different electronic uh tray mounts uh, uh, it does come with the skid and rear shock towers here now transmission um unfortunately we can't see a whole lot of goodness but that transmission there is actually encased and then bolted to the chassis itself so it has two carbon fiber plates and it does use uh deluxe portal gear transmission so i had an extra deluxe portal transmissions i took the plates off pulled the gears and bearings out put them in this transmission sandwiched them together and then you can bolt it to the chassis rails and right here we have some adjustments um in the chassis rails i um, mean you see these holes here and these holes up here this is these two are the transmission and which means you can bolt it up, bolt it down, bring it forward, or bring it re bring it to the rear. Um, so it's able to fit with a variety of motor sizes and help with placement when, you know, whatever works. If you need to move it back a little bit for some clearance, you can move it back. If you can move it forward, move it forward, drop it down low, raise it up a little bit, not a problem there. Also on the rails, you see right here is an integrated winch mount. So, so there's one on each side of the rails and I have my uh, Atlas Pro in on this side right now. I will add a second winch for the rear um, here later on. I just haven't got around to it yet, but I was like, at least I have a front winch. So we'll be good to go there. We have plenty of um, adjustable, we have plenty of shock locations here. And then the rear shock towers are, are detachable so you can move them forward and backwards on the chassis as you see fit based on your wheelbase and stuff like that. And they do have plenty of adjustments. The thing with this is, you know, tons of clearance back here for brake over and stuff like that. Um, and you see, and even mine, my links aren't bent as much as I could bend them, but turns out I 
I'm not very, very good at making my own really long bent links. Um, I actually messed up two or three sets of titanium links before I just gave up and was like, okay, this works. We're going to see how it rocks and rolls. And honestly, it did really, really good. In addition to that, because you know, you do have a longer and everything back here, so this one does uh, run a carry bearing. We have the Silent Assassin uh, carrier bearing here, um, and you can run this up or down. I have my ran down just to try to keep everything lower and get some of the uh, angle off those uh, both those rear drive shafts so everything flows good. I don't have to worry about any binding or anything like that. Um, I just put it right to my main lines and lines I know a truck I build should do um, and it handled everything. Um, really really good. The breakover and some more steeper inclines did really really good and side hole on this um, was also very good so definitely happy with this ability to do both you know have some side hill and be able to handle some extreme breakover and some inclines because that's one area yeah i do travel and comp a lot but i spend 90 percent of my crawling time at my local area and we have lots of breakover you know steep ledges and stuff like that so i tend i want a chassis that i drive on a regular basis to definitely be able to handle my area so that is why I, again, I favor forward base chassis and the breakover because it benefits me in my area the most. Then from chassis uh, down to the shocks there, I have some uh, 80 millimeter uh, deluxe uh, shocks there. So this is their ultra short. I also have the three millimeter spaces in there. So they're brought down just a little bit lower even. Um, and they did good. Everything there was on point and everything right in there on some super shafty CP43 axles. Um, very nice. Uh, this is actually the first set that I've actually got all done, fully built and everything. Super excited. Um, they look and feel fabulous. Uh, Width-wise, they're in between an AR45 portal axle and a capper axle. So, uh, And I like that width a lot. It suits me and my driving style and everything really, really good. I think it's a good, happy medium. Plus, I can with wheels and hubs, I can bring offsets in and out if I need to. If I need to go a touch wider or a touch narrower, I can still get the overall track width um, down if I need to. And these axles do accommodate for um, chassis mount servo option. They have panhard or with ax servo behind axle. So right here on mine, servo behind axle. Um, and I do have a just a small two, three millimeter spacer under the servo just to bring it up a little bit. So I don't have much of anything there blocking. The servo is not hanging down. Into the axles, of course, built with uh, um, goodies internal. Um, we are running stock uh, ratio um, portal gears uh, in the rear. I'm running um, the mild or more aggressive um, overdrive ratio in the front. I believe I'm equating to about 24% overdrive. Uh, deluxe portal gears uh, front and rear. Um, and then I'm also running the newer uh, deluxe heavy brass outer portal covers, which weigh about, I think they're four, maybe five ounces each. So um, I think they're the heaviest portal cover for that style um, on the market right now. And then for uh, wheels and tires here, uh, we have some Shift RC 2.2 uh, beadlock wheels. And for tires, we run the uh, 4.75 Tusk tire and foams in here, uh, trying out some uh, alt foams. I have, they have some that are specifically made for the Tusk 4.22 wheels. So it is a 2.2 foam for the 1.9 tire. So, and also they did, they did really good. Then moving into electronics. Um, servo up here, of course, we have the G13 Pro server from Three Brothers RC uh, motor. We have the 1500 kV yellow jacket from Three Brothers RC. Also, like I mentioned, the Atlas Pro uh, servo winch from Three Brothers. Um, and I do run the whole thing on 4S, so I have plenty of power. Steering's not an issue. Um, winch speed and power's not an issue. Even being the micro winch, this thing has done really, really well for me. Um, since it's came out, I've had zero issues. Powering all that, we have the uh, 70 amp Silent Assassin ESC, um, which Super smooth. I don't have to worry about any noise. Tons of power. Tons of low-end control. Um, so, overall, the whole chassis setup, everything has done great. And, you know, that pretty much wraps this one up. So, um, again, I'll have everything linked down below, uh, minus the chassis at this point. Let's end it with some good old fun uh, crawling footage. So, I uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, any questions, comments, anything like that, as always, bone down below. Do my best to get everything answered. Until next time, everyone, have a great one. Crawl on.